Once upon a time, there was a king who was given a challenge by the master of the royal granary. The challenge was to count the number of grains of wheat needed to fill the granaries. The king started counting, and at first the numbers were small 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. But as he continued counting, the numbers grew bigger and bigger. By the time he reached the 64th square, the number of grains was almost 18.5 quintillion. That's a lot of wheat, more than what could fit in the Shah's granaries. If each grain of wheat was the size of a millimeter, all those grains together would weigh around 75 billion metric tons. That's heavier than all the Earth's mountains combined. This amount of wheat is the equivalent of about 150 years of the world's wheat production. We don't know what happened next in the story, but it shows us how quickly numbers can grow when they double over and over again, like in a game called Exponential Increase. Exponentials are found in many important things in life, like compound interest. Imagine if your ancestor put $10 in the bank 200 years ago and it earned 5% interest each year. Today, it would be worth $172,925.81. If the interest rate was 6%, it would be worth over a million dollars, and at 7%, over $7.5 million. On the other hand, inflation, which is when the value of money goes down over time, also follows an exponential pattern. If the inflation rate is 5% a year, a dollar will be worth less than a dollar after a certain number of years. Exponential growth is also seen in biological reproduction. For example, if a bacterium splits into two, and then each of those two splits into two more, the number of bacteria can grow very quickly. But this growth can't go on forever because it will eventually run out of food or resources, or the environment will become too crowded. The same thing happens with the AIDS epidemic. Right now, the number of people with AIDS symptoms is growing exponentially, but it can't continue at that rate forever. There will be natural impediments that will slow down or stop the growth. So, even though exponential growth can seem overwhelming, it always has a limit. It's important to remember that when we're dealing with things like money, population growth, or diseases. There was a disease called AIDS that affected many people around the world. At first, it mainly affected certain groups of people who were not easily mixing with the rest of the population, like gay men people with a blood disorder called hemophilia, and drug users who shared needles. But if a cure for AIDS is not found, more and more people could be at risk. Now, there are some people who are naturally immune to AIDS, which means they don't get sick from it. For example, straight couples who have been together for a long time and are careful with their actions, or those who use protection, are mostly safe from AIDS. However, if we don't take care, other groups of people might become more affected by the disease. Just like AIDS, the number of people on Earth is also growing very fast, like an exponential curve. This means that the population keeps doubling over time. If we keep growing like this, we might run out of resources to feed everyone. Even if we could live on other planets, it would still take a very long time to accommodate all the people. The only way to slow down this growth is to have fewer children. Interestingly, there is a connection between how many children a family has and how much money they have. In many countries, when people become less poor, they tend to have fewer children. This is called the demographic transition. It's important for every part of the world to go through this transition to help control the population growth. Let's talk about something else exponentials and half-life. Exponentials help us understand things that grow or decrease at a faster and faster rate. Half-life is a concept used for radioactive elements. These elements break down over time, and half of them decay in a certain amount of time called the half-life. After another half-life, half of the remaining amount decays, and so on. This is important for understanding how old things are, like rocks or artifacts, by measuring the amount of radioactive material and its decay products. Quantification, or using numbers to understand things, is a powerful tool. It helps us make sense of the world around us and even predict things. 
For example, knowing about exponentials can help us understand the secrets of the universe. Now, let's switch to a story about Monday Night Hunters. Every fall, people gather around TVs to watch football games. It's a game where 22 men run, jump, and tackle each other while trying to move a ball towards a goal. It might sound silly, but there's something thrilling about watching people perform at such a high level. It's also a way for people to connect and share emotions. Football is not just a sport played in America. It has been enjoyed by many different cultures throughout history. The need to watch and participate in such activities might be rooted in our evolution and the instinct to hunt and fight. Once upon a time, in a world filled with different countries and cities, there were these amazing sports games that people loved to watch and play. These games were not just about having fun, but also about representing where people lived and the people they shared their lives with. It was like their team was a part of their family, and they would cheer for them against other teams from different places. Sometimes, the players on these teams would change cities, just like how people move to new places. This didn't bother the fans too much, as long as their team kept winning. Winning was very important to everyone involved in sports. Some people even said that losing was like death. The connection between sports and wars was often talked about. People would get very passionate about their teams, and sometimes, they would fight or even hurt others because of it. There were even times when wars broke out because of sports games. It was as if the excitement and energy of the game spilled over into real life. In the past, there were even more extreme examples of this connection. In some cultures, sports games were seen as a kind of war, and the winners would be celebrated while the losers faced harsh consequences. Today, we might find it hard to understand why people would get so worked up over a game, but deep down, we all want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves, something that feels like a small victory without having to put in much effort. In 1996, a basketball player named Mahmoud Abdul Rauf didn't want to stand up during the national anthem. He felt that the American flag represented something not nice to him because of his Muslim beliefs. Some people agreed with him, while others didn't. This made people think about why we play the national anthem at sports games. Way back in ancient times, around 3,500 years ago, people in Greece started having sports competitions. They didn't wear clothes and only women weren't allowed to watch. These games were so important that wars stopped during the events. They ran, jumped, threw things, and wrestled. These games are the beginning of the sports we play today. In the old days, hunting was also considered a sport, but only for rich people who didn't eat what they caught. Hunting was like a team sport for poor people who couldn't join the hunt. These sports helped people feel like they were part of something bigger than themselves. As humans have evolved, we've been playing sports for a very long time. It might even be in our genes. Our species is hundreds of thousands of years old, but we've only been farming and raising animals for the last 3% of that time. The rest of the time, we were hunter-gatherers living off the land and moving from place to place. In these hunter-gatherer communities, men hunted for food, while women gathered things like nuts, fruits, and roots. Both men and women had important roles in their groups. When men became good hunters, they were celebrated, and sometimes they even got tattoos to show their accomplishments. So, from ancient times to today, sports have been a big part of human life. They help us feel connected to each other and to our past. Even though some people might not understand why we do certain things, like playing the national anthem at sports games, sports bring us together in a special way. Long ago, people who lived before us spent most of their time hunting animals for food. They had to be very good at it because their lives depended on it. They learned how to tell many things about the animals just by looking at their footprints. They discovered different ways to catch animals, like using their hands, slingshots, or spears. Sometimes, they would even work together to trap a whole group of animals. Hunting was a very important part of their lives, and they had to keep their feelings in check. They respected the animals, but also needed to hunt them for survival. It was a delicate balance. They had to be careful not to scare the animals away, 
so they used sign language to communicate with each other during the hunt. Over many, many years, people who were good at hunting and working together had more children. This means that the ability to hunt and the desire to do it became a natural part of who they were. Hunting spread to different parts of the world and lasted for a very long time. Even though we don't hunt for food the same way they did, we still enjoy activities that remind us of the hunt. Sports like football or computer games can give us a taste of the excitement and teamwork involved in hunting. The skills and qualities that were useful for hunters, like being resourceful, accurate, and working well with others, are still admired today. But we've forgotten why these traits were so important in the first place. Hunter-gatherers lived in a way that was generally safe and happy. They didn't have many problems with possessions, theft, or envy. Women had a lot of power and helped keep the group peaceful. If someone did something really bad, like hurting someone else, the whole group would decide what to do about it. These early people didn't have leaders or a hierarchy like we do now. There was no one to rebel against because everyone was treated fairly. Life was simpler back then, but it also had its own challenges and dangers. Even though we don't live like hunter-gatherers anymore, we can still learn from their ways. They showed us the importance of working together, respecting nature, and finding balance in our lives.